Today, we're going to talk about giant tortoises. What are the largest species in the world? Where does the African spurred tortoise rank? And I've got one surprise for you. We'll also talk a little bit about Aldabra tortoises shown here and how they can be distinguished from Galapagos tortoises. When we think about a giant tortoise, our mind typically goes first to the two island species, the Galapagos tortoise and the Aldabran tortoise shown here. Galapagos and Aldabra tortoises are the two largest species of tortoise. Here is a Galapagos tortoise. Galapagos tortoises are generally considered the largest species, with Aldabras a close second. Both species can grow over four feet long and weigh in excess of 500 pounds. Here, my granddaughter feeds carrots to a Galapagos tortoise. Watch those fingers. Both Galapagos and Aldabra tortoises look somewhat similar. Here, the Aldabra tortoise can see a narrower head and they have a neutral scoot, which is not present in this Galapagos tortoise. You see, there's no neutral scoot. The neutral scoot on an Aldabra tortoise is that small scoot directly above the tortoise's neck. Not all Aldabra tortoises will have the neutral scoot. Sometimes when you can't see it from above, if you look up from below the shell, you can see it underneath. Another question I get about these two giant tortoises are which are the friendliest, which are the most personable? And while they both can be quite similar, and it depends on the individual tortoise, overall, I tend to think that the Galapagos tortoise is the most personable, will stand up high, allow you to scratch their neck, as will the Aldabra, but the Aldabras tend to be just a little bit more skittish. And when they're younger, the Aldabras may actually run from you. And the Galapagos stands high, just hoping I'll come back and scratch his neck. The Aldabra tortoises also come towards me, and they're looking for food. They'll allow me to scratch his head and scratch his neck, but they typically don't stick their head high up into the air. Sometimes they just stick it straight out. And as young tortoises, at times they'll almost want to run from you. But with a little work and effort, they become quite personable and very similar to the Galapagos tortoise. Yeah, you'll let me scratch your neck, even if I didn't get you in the picture. One of the methods to acclimate the tortoises so they'll stick their necks out and look for the neck scratches is to spray them down with the hose. When you pull the hose out and you spray the tortoise, they'll typically all stand up high. And it's during this time, they stick that neck out. They, you can start scratching them and get them acclimated and used to you so that then they'll look forward just to the next scratch, even if they're not getting washed off. You see the tortoise in the background standing up high just waiting for me to come wash it off. So that's a good way, if you've got one that's a little shy, doesn't want to get its neck scratched, to acclimate it to you so that it'll stand up and let you scratch its neck. So both Aldabras and Galapagos tortoises can be quite personable and interact with people. Here, my granddaughter helps wash off some of the Galapagos tortoises. Can you tell just from that head that that's a Galapagos and not an Aldabran? 
You can't see the neutral scoop from here, but you can tell by the head shape what type of tortoise it is. Sexing Galapagos and Eldabras is fairly simple. Here you can see this Galapagos female, short little stubby tail. And the male Galapagos tortoise, may be hard to tell from the picture, but much bigger, thicker, longer tail. And the males grow larger than the females. On the Eldabra, same thing. This is a female, dripping from having just been hosed this is off. Male Aldabra. And this is a male, much longer, much longer thicker, tail. thicker tail. Did you know there's multiple species of Galapagos tortoises? And while they do live in groups, they can fight a little bit, but typically they get along well. This is the Hood Island. Diego, who repopulated his species, one of the most successful captive breeding of any species ever. And they've now been returned to their island, unlike Pinta Island tortoise that's now extinct. Fortunately, due to captive breeding here in the United States, Galapagos tortoises are available though they are on the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Endangered Species list and require a permit to move across state lines. Now let's talk about number three of the giant tortoises, the African Spurred Tortoise and the most commonly owned of the giant tortoises, not necessarily the best. As you see here, males will fight and combat often to the death if one sticks a gular into the other's neck. They may not necessarily be the best species. They big, dig deep burrows and can plow through just about anything. While they can be quite personable, they may just choose to ram your, your leg like you're another tortoise. But due to successful captive breeding, they are readily available in the U.S. African spurred tortoises can grow up to about 30 inches and weigh over 100 pounds. But if you've got the right setup, they can be a great pet tortoise and you can have your own giant tortoise. So I put them as number three on the list of giant tortoises behind Galops, Aldabras, and now Sulcatas. And next, number four is a surprise, the Yellowfoot Tortoise. This one pictured at the St. Louis Zoo was said to be 220 pounds and 37 inches. Unfortunately, that's the only picture I have of it. So I'm showing you a picture of my Galops is when you looked at it at the zoo, it looked about the size of the Galops. This probably shouldn't make my list, as most yellowfoots only grow about half the size of this Amazon basin giant. So fifth on my list is the leopard tortoise. And while most leopard tortoises don't get that large, the ones from Ethiopia and Somalia grow about the same size as an African spurred tortoise. The females were around 24 inches in length and the large male almost 30 inches. So that's my list of the five largest tortoise species, Galapagos, Aldabra, African spurred tortoise, the yellowfoot, and the leopard tortoise. So I hope you've enjoyed the video, maybe learned a few things, and maybe have some other ideas. Should I have included the Burmese mountain tortoise? And how about honorable mention for maybe Burmese star tortoises, even radiated tortoises? And the plowshare tortoise is actually one of the larger species. But 
I'll go back to Galapagos as my number one, both in size and personality. And looks like we're at the tail end of this video. So I hope you've enjoyed it and have a great day. And who knows when I'll come out with the next video. Take care. We'll see you later.